Hey, welcome back to part two of my um, hangout with me in the kitchen on a Sunday. I want to talk about gadgets. Um, like the mandolin. I like this one because it has this safety feature, feature in it. It also has this, you know, you want to grip a certain kind of veggie or whatever. You can hold it with that and run it across the blade. Or, like when I do my sweet potatoes, I just keep the whole thing together and I run my sweet potatoes across the blade after I put them in here. Cause I ain't about that life. I'm not slicing nothing with just my big hand, right? No, I'm not ready. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use the safety features. I'm gonna um, peel these. It's not gonna take long. Let's see. I got this old guy right here for my cheese block. There's the little receptacle that goes under there. Boom, boom, boom. You get a nice bowl of cheese at the bottom. But this also, my mandolin has a grater. Real, real sharp. Don't play no games with that. Mm -mm. Just grab the cheese with a little egg and work it out. Because it's not playing. It's not playing at all. Um, for my mashed potatoes, I'm going to use red skin on. I just do. Don't mind all that. They're just hanging out. But yeah, I got to rinse these off. Slice them up. Put them in a nice pot of water. But I'm going to do those at the end. After I do the mac and cheese. Because speaking of gadgets, here's the thing. I started over a few months ago. Throughout everything. So I don't have two or three big pots to work with. I have this nice saucepan here that I'm going to make my um, gravy in. I have this pot right here I'm going to cook my potatoes in. And notice I'm short on big pots. So, when it's time to make the macaroni, I got a saucepan I can use for that. But I have another Dutch oven back here that I can use for my sweet potatoes only. Never enough sweet potatoes. I don't know how we keep doing this. The greens and the sweet potatoes always go first. So I'm going to have to rotate, which means my schedule has to accommodate for how to get things done in order. So. What am I going to do next? I got an hour and a half left on my roast. So, my greens are already on. They're going to go for as long as that roast goes. And then I'll check. But, as soon as the roast comes out, you're not going to cut it and serve it. You're just going to let it rest for 20, 30 minutes. And then, you're going to set it to the side and save that liquid and make that gravy. But, for now... What goes next? Logically speaking, my sweet potatoes could be next, but not yet. So in about an hour, after I finish slicing and dicing, I mean slicing and all that peeling and everything, I can get my cheese prepped in about a few minutes in between. I can take a break and then I can come and put the sweet potatoes on. They only need about 20, 30 minutes tops. But then they're going to sit in that syrup after I turn the heat off. And they're going to cook a little bit more. And they're going to get syrupy and love on each other. And, and that, that it's going to be an ama amazing situation in that pot. So, yeah, I'm going to save that one for them. The frying pan. The skillet can go back. But that's how you got to be in this kitchen. You got to plan and you got to prep. So, yeah. The very next thing I do is peel and slice sweet potatoes. Then I put them in their pot and sit them to the side till it's time to turn the heat on. And then I grate my cheese. I'm gonna use this one because I like the cup. And then eventually I'm gonna put my cheese sauce on because I make my mac and cheese with cheese sauce. I'm gonna need, oh no, what do I do for the cheese sauce pan? I guess I'm going to have to rotate the gravy pan. Okay, well, 
Bang bang. Cheese sauce pan. There you go. I'm gonna use some heavy cream and some butter and some spice, some seasonings and some cheeses. And it's gonna be a nice situation. I'm gonna boil the macaroni. And then I'm gonna pour it in the pan and mix in the eggs. Yep, eggs, because I need protein in my foods when I eat carbs, because carbs they make me feel bloaty and heavy and still hungry. So it just take up space, but it don't satisfy me. So yeah, I put fat and protein in my um, carb dishes. My mashed potatoes will be potato with um, heavy cream and butter and seasoning. So yeah, that. But yeah, um, next. I feel like we've talked about this before, but if you're using a knife to peel your sweet potatoes and you, you know, getting arthritis and everything, maybe that's probably why I got arthritis from typing and peeling potatoes all my life. But, um, yeah, I got one of these from the Big Lots. <laughs> it's going to peel that skin off in no time, and then I'm going to slice it on my mandolin. Boop, boop. Check it. That was, hold on. And let's go. If it ain't this easy, then you need to get a new tool. Then, I don't usually do these one at a time, but I'm gonna demonstrate for you. I'm gonna go here and I start with my hand. If it ain't this easy, you need a new tool. And then I come here, cause I ain't playing. Just touch it. You're going to lose some skin. I'm just saying. And there you go. Tools. Meanwhile, I heard somebody say, why don't you just buy some more pots? Well, I used to have more pots. But then I got sick and they sat on the counter for what seemed like months. So I was really upset about that. And I figure the more pots I see, the more work I'm up envision me having to do. So, move out of the way. So if I, um... Keep it to a little bit of pots, then I can recycle in between while I'm in the groove, but I won't lose my motivation because at the end, all the pots add up. And anybody watching all them dishes at one time, it's just different when you see it all at once. But when you do it as a process, you know, it just affects your psyche differently. Psychologically speaking, I don't want to see all that. That's all. So, yeah, I could use more pots, but. That would cause me a problem when it comes down to wash and rinse and unload the dishwasher and stuff. And you know all the people that keep saying, ooh, you cooking, ooh, you cooking. The Bamas don't ever come help me cook or clean. So, yeah, there's that. And that there is what you want. I make mine kind of a little bit thin. Mm. Well, between thick and thin, like, let me show you the meter. So it's on the second thickness because... I don't want them to dissolve in the heat while they cook, but I want them to be nice and, you know, easy to cook, quick, palatable. Why do I do medallions? Because I believe most people cook their sweet potatoes wrong. They do all this water on the stove and then they get soft and they full of water, but not flavor. And then you stick them in the oven for another cook and you put the extra flavor on it, but they already absorbed all the water. So that's all that's in there. So I cook mine directly in the flavoring. So I'm gonna add some water cause it's gonna help them steam and cook through while you know they absorb more of the syrupy situation. I'm gonna bathe them in with the brown sugar. Yes, brown cause brown sugar has molasses and molasses is extra character and it's a little bit of a rich flavor to it. White sugar, eh, it's sweet, but don't have no personality like brown sugar. So yeah, brown sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, um, sometimes nutmeg. Today I don't have none. Um, butter. What I, what I miss? Brown sugar, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, butter, sprinkle of salt. You gotta have salt because salt makes everything wake up and say, hey, this is what I taste like. 
don't be afraid of the salt. Just don't use too much salt. You be the boss. Don't let it push you around and make you intimidated and stuff. You need it, even for sweet stuff. All right, I got an idea. Change of plans. I'm going to cook my potatoes in the small Dutch oven. I think that'll fit nicely. Yep. So, that's one double up I don't have to do. Um, Got my macaroni water on. I don't know what I said I was going to do, but, yeah, it just makes sense at this point. One hour. I'm going to cook the macaroni, set it to the side, make the cheese sauce. Um then get that out of the way and I can put on my sweet potatoes. Bang, bang. Uh, it don't look like we gonna make bread cause again, nobody wants to help. So make the bread, let the bread rise, make the rolls, let them rise again, bake them all at the end when it's beautiful and then people come through the door. Yeah, I'm gonna pass. Not today. So yeah macaroni next then mashed potatoes are last because it takes them maybe 20 30 minutes to cook but then you once you mix them up you gotta hurry up and put something on them because they get cold quick so they last yep bang bang macaroni put to the side cheese sauce boom throw them together put them in the oven after the roast comes out well actually i can use the top oven whatever we'll see boom then the greens still doing that thing and the mashed potatoes can be last and there you go all right it's about now when my back starts to hurt got my assembly line going come on macaroni water i need to have a seat let's see Whew, it's hot see my people showing up I got my cheese sauce going good. My backup's waiting. But this is what you want right here. A nice thick sauce. I melted the cheese in here gradually. The grated cheese and the blocks of cheese. And then it's this consistency that you want. Just hanging on. Just keep stirring it and stirring it so it don't stick to the bottom and burn your cheese all up. But yeah, you gotta babysit this. And um, whew, I had to pause briefly to go open my door because uh, people showed up without their parents. And um, yeah, it's at a pivotal time where I have to transition from this to that and this to that. So let me get at it. I'll be right back. All right, nice bath. <laughs> oh, it's a bath. Nice bath. Cheese sauce. Bang, bang. That's going in the oven. I put my potatoes. I decided I'm going to cook those a little bit uh, right now. Because, ooh, two minutes before the roast comes out. That's like 30 minutes from now. I can start doing some gravy and everything else should be ready when the gravy's done i throw it back over the roast beef boom and dinner served so let me hmm nah i don't want my potatoes to be weird but then again they can't mash let me think on that but sprinkle a little salt on the potatoes when you're cooking them because you know potatoes they need flavor when you're cooking the things is when you want to put the flavor in because after you cooked it it's already absorbed whatever whatever it's gonna absorb and the flavor just gonna be on top and it's gonna be kind of gross so just bathe it in what you're gonna cook it with like this i'm gonna add some water to these and um everything else is already in there oh get the butter girl get the butter well not quite like every other time because it ain't underneath a bunch of potatoes but oh that there that's what you want just touch it a little bit if it fall apart Yep, that's how you like it right there. Boom. All right, I'm gonna let that chill out right here while I get the rest of my stuff together. Come back, make some gravy. Bang, bang. Put the loveliness, not water. 
bathed in syrup. You see that little butterfly thing showing? Yeah. All that flavor in that water. Mushrooms going ready for my gravy. My greens are done. This is around the time when my feet will, like the old people used to say, catch a fire, because they sure are. So I'm cooking my mushrooms and some butter and the same seasonings I used on the roast. Because remember, they're going to be together. But they got to have the same flavors layered into them both. So yeah, these gonna cook down. I'm going to throw in that juice from the roast. Cook them some more so they can soak up all that beef flavor and be similar to the roast beef itself. Because mushrooms take on the flavor if you give them whatever it is. They'll just soak it on in. So it'll be like an extension of the roast beef. Mushrooms are kind of like meaty too. So it'll be like I just, you know, add it to the meat. You know what I'm saying. If this little boy asks me one more time if the microphone is ready, no, it would cause third degree burns in your mouth, baby. I'm not going to let you have that. It's good, but it need like 20 minutes to relax. Because good Lord, champ, that thing hot. Don't play around. Yes? Ain't no monsters in here. I told you we don't have that. And what that mean? It's not ready yet. Almost. Um, but it's my breath. Boy, be <laughs> Relax and wait a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> this little baby keep coming back in my kitchen every five minutes saying, Ma, is it ready? Is it ready? And I said, no. When it's ready, I'm going to say, hey, it's ready. So this time when he came to the kitchen, he said, Ma, you about to say, hey, it's ready? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to do no work. <laughs> but they want me to hurry up. <laughs> I just want y'all to hear something. Hey, hey, Babe, it's not ready. So somebody has posted up at the counter and um, I guess he gonna watch me cause <laughs> I didn't say it yet. <laughs> so he wanna be right here when he figures out that it is R-E-A-D-Y. And even though I'm hot and irritated and my feet on fire and my back hurt, it's very funny cause he think he's slick. He gonna ask me again in a minute. He was like, say it, Ma, say it. Say it's ready. <laughs> hey. I said it's ready. Well, I can't say that yet, babe. Turn that right, turn your, your tablet down some. Well, turn it down. But the mashed potatoes are almost ready. Oh. And then you know what I'm going to say? It's not ready. Are you going to leave both for me? Give you what? I can leave both for me. Give you what? A bowl for me. A bowl? Yeah. What you going to put in the bowl? Not the one. <laughs> Hey, it's ready. Ooh, child. You said it's ready. I said it, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know where I'm about to go? To my room to watch football. Yeah, it's ready. Hmm. Oh, that macaroni? It's just macaroni where it was in the oven. It got a little crunch. Just a little crunch, eat it. It's cheese. You love cheese. Oh, yeah, it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna go see that. Huh.